In this video tutorial, I want to take you through how to do some basic detailing inside of Revit. So what we have here is a house floor plan, and I want to create a section and then go and produce some callouts to detail up. So we have some simple tools inside of Revit. Uh, we have our main authoring tools here, and then we have in our view tab other tool, tools for doing sections and callouts. You'll also note that there are some shortcut keys up the top here, and one of the ones featured is our section door. So you can also customize this should you need to, and uh, adjust uh, what you want to put in that quick access toolbar. So I'm going to use the section tool, and I want to do a section through this uh, patio area. And I'll just do that section. At the moment, this one's uh, customized to look a certain way, but you can start to adjust how you want those to look. Uh, I'm just going to right click and go to that view and now it's starting to bring up a little more information about that section. It is displayed as a coarse setting here, sorry medium setting, so I'm going to put it on to uh, fine. Sometimes uh, you may have in your projects templates, so this one in, in this case has a template. I'll turn it off for now, you can turn it off directly here or uh, we have another tool another tool here that is um, a temporary uh, view template. So you can actually enable um, temporary view properties and this will bring up that tool or you can do it from the menu bar. So if we go to uh, fine and we're just gonna keep it on head and line. A little bit more information uh, comes in here. So you'll start to see a little bit more being revealed that we can start to work up for our details. Uh, so I've got my section here, this is at 1 to 100, maybe your sections may want to be shown at 150, so just do your 1 to 50 tool here, and you'll see the line weights and the dashes for the openings of the windows adjust, so you can see as I go to 1 to 20, it gets even finer, the hatching gets finer as well. I'll leave it at 1 to 50, and what I want to do is do a call out. And we've got this little uh, pergola area. You can see we've got a column um, holding up that pergola. And then we've got uh, a little wrap down and a bit of roof. And there's a bit more detail in here for um, the guttering and the plasterboarding, etc. So I want to do a, a, a basic call out. And you can do this anywhere. It might be for the threshold. It could be for a bit of decking. Uh, very simple. So we go to the next uh, view tool and go to call out. And uh, there's two options. You can do a standard rectangle or we can do a sketch one. So I'll just go sketch and uh, let's say I'm just going to be a bit creative here. And then uh, close that up. Hit uh, the tick button to finish it. And now we have our call out. What you'll see is it's not producing um, any text on the call out tag here. Um, it's when you put it on a sheet that it will, will show up. So now if I just click on that call out and go to view, we now have a, uh, a view that we can work with. So uh, I'm going to turn off the uh, template for this one. It's just defaulting to this one. Just turn it off. And we'll go to uh, find level of detail. And we'll go to something maybe 1 to 10. It's really nice, nice detail. What's really cool here is you'll start to see um, levels showing up. So you can see the levels are showing up. If you want to turn them on, you can click on these little uh, buttons here and it will uh, show the annotation so nice little references for either end when you're doing the detail and because it scales um, you can see it's all, all coming right and then uh, from here you can either uh, work up the detail in 3d or you can choose to do it in 2d so uh, what's always good for new users is to perhaps explore the 2d option as opposed to trying to do everything in 3D all at once. Um, another thing to note here is um, we have a bit more information in the background. And uh, I'm just going to close my windows. We, uh, we have this information here in the background. Maybe we don't want to show them the detail. It could be a bit confusing. Uh, you also see the line weights aren't showing up. So if I just go over here and click on the thin lines, now when I, with that one turned off you can see there's a bit of line weight so this helps with the graphical representation of that detail so i'm just going to uh, navigate back to a couple of things let's go back to that that top view and you can see here um, the section box is bringing a lot of information i don't need all that information maybe i just want to take it back to the column or maybe we're just looking at the the roofing and the guttering so i'll just go here and then we'll just uh, click, go back to the view where you can tab across 
And now let's just bring up a little bit more information that's relevant to the detail we're working on. Uh, maybe I want a little bit more background information, so I'll just take it back to that column. And when we go back to that view, not the C4R view, um, now it's kind of the detailed information that, that we want. Uh, if we don't want to see certain items inside the view, there's a couple options here. You can uh, click on the option, right click, and go hide in view. Um, some people don't like to do that. Um, you, you go and create filters if you wanted to do that, uh, be a bit more advanced about it. Or you could go to uh, the visibility graphics. And again, this is all in your view tab. Visibility graphics. And you can navigate down to uh, lighting. Because I'm not going to be doing any detailing and lighting in this view. So I can navigate here and just turn off lighting at the top of the parent tree. Apply. OK. And now that's not in the view. OK. Uh, so getting down to um, some options here for detailing. You can see uh, for guttering. Now the guttering is showing up. And um, this one uh, has actually been modeled as a box gutter. And there's a few options here where you can start to load in different profiles. So I won't do a deep dive on any of these. I just want to say that you can do uh, changes to profiles. So if we want to go to maybe another one that's along the eaves and go apply, that will change to that type of uh, box gutter. So this one is actually built with um, the actual uh, profile sweeping along um, that item and uh, that is forming forming the gutter. Now, uh, from here, if you want to detail it up, um, I'll just bring in some basic detailing components directly from, from Revit. So when we go to annotate, um, we have some detail lines, and you can um, uh, do fills if you want to in certain items directly here inside the detail. Uh, you can do it in the object as well. Uh, for the sake of what I'm doing here, I'm just gonna do a, a, a a line, uh, a closed line, and um, you can start to play around with uh, different line types and items here. Let me just escape out of that and just show you the field region. Uh, field region, you can um, choose a different type of hatch, so cross hatch diagonal, and I'm just going to do the um, bit of roof here. And again, this is just my, my basic detailing. You'll see the padlocks appear, so you can actually padlock them. Uh, to the items, go OK, and now we have a nice little bit of hatching here. And I can't move that because it is locked to the uh, object, so you can see it comes up as a constraint. But it's a really quick way to do some hatching if you haven't gone and done this in the materials. Likewise, um, let me just bring this up. If you want to edit the materials, go to structure, go to um, the core boundary. Well, let's, let's do the um, substrate for the pattern, and we'll just put a bit of a uh, hatch on that particular material. So at the moment there's nothing. Um, we'll do this on both. So we'll do it on the um, surface and cut. So a surface, we'll grab a wood and then um, cut pattern, we'll do something similar. Um, we'll do, do that one. Go OK and uh, go apply. OK, OK, apply, OK. And now we've got the hatching happening there inside of the object. So pretty pretty simple stuff. It just depends on how you set this all up, how much time you put into things. By default, um, certain walls, if you're using the brick module, will come out with that hatching for you. Uh, and then finally, the couple other ones I want to show is insulation. So if I want to insulate, um, I can actually just use this insulation tool to drag the insulation across from point A to point B. I know this is a pergola, um, pergola area. It's an out outdoor area, so it doesn't not really applicable. I just wanted to show you the insulation. Uh, you've got your dimensioning tools here where you can start to crank it up a little bit. And over here is your insulation width. So if it's 40, 60, 50, so that's 40 mil, you can go and um, fine tune that. And then there's even like a little uh, adjustment to the crack here. So if I just uh, expand that out, you can see um, that's really uh, condensing the insulation. Uh, but by default, you've got uh, a nice graphic there to show insulation. Uh, you can go here to your uh, insert and load a family and hopefully you've got your uh, library set up to default to the place where you want to have your families. Mine is on my, my E drive. I've got a separate folder for that. Could be on your network drive. Uh, you go to your details here and we have detail items and we have all these built in 2D details which you can bring in to uh, into Revit. So I think for now. So a simple thing might be a bolt and this is something you probably won't want to model 
but I have come across a number of users who have, and um, they do a fantastic job. Um, they like to go down to the sort of detail that's very important for them. Um, we'll just put in a um, Australian, um, where's an anchor bolt, and we'll go open, and this is just updating. And then when we go down to our uh, families here, we have detail items. You can see it's loaded in uh, some of those items. So there's all those different hatches. There's a brick joint already in. And then we've got a few um, anchor bolts. So we'll go for an M12, of course. And that just tells us the properties. And there's a few parameters to flex. And we'll just go here. And uh, we'll put this in. And again, this probably isn't the best way to be uh, detailing up a, a gutter. But um, for the sake of what I'm doing, I'm just going to show you this. Uh, so here it is. Um, you can hit your space bar to uh, rotate it. There's also um, a couple of little handles here to um, drive the length of it. I'll just rotate around and maybe we're going to be bolting something onto the side of the building. Um, so it's a nice little tool. Um, and, and as before, um, I mentioned like you can go here and just do a little um, padlock to lock it. And you could do it at the other end if you want. Um, but as that wall now moves, so I just, just uh, push it across a little bit. It's just moving the wall, it's connected to other properties. You can see the bolts moving with it. So the the nut, um, or the bolt end is, the nut nut isn't, so I just need to bring that across and just snap that in. We'll get there. So that is a, a very quick overview on how to do a section, do a call out, get into the, the detail of your Revit model, um, start to work it up. There's also uh, finally just text and text can be set up with these great arrow tools in Revit 2017 where we've got some really good uh, multi-line text. Um, but simple things to type in here. Just go zero, zero. And now you have text and you can control the, the arrows and the way you want these all to um, present uh, for your company standards. So uh, that's the uh, first, that's all that. That is the uh, first sort of uh, 101, get up to speed really quickly with Revit and detailing.